from inside Memorial Stadium. This is the Huskers Radio Network podcast. All Huskers, all the time. Here's your host, Jessica Cootie. Well, we welcome you back into another edition of the Huskers Radio Network podcast. I'm Jessica Cootie, and a special guest joining us here today, Marquita Armstead, the Executive Associate Athletic Director and the new Senior Woman Administrator, filling the role of Pat Logson, who had been in that role for a long time. Marquita, welcome. Thank I know you've you been around. So and it's much. been a little bit of a whirlwind, but first time we, we were getting you in studio. So welcome. Thanks Thank, for joining us. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. How has it been? Uh, you were hired officially back in December, started in February. What's uh, this process been like? It, it's been very interesting because I feel like I'm still straddling two places. My family is still back in Tampa, Florida. They'll come after the school year and then I'm here and I've been back there a couple of times and just trying to get acclimated here and with my new departments and new sports. And so it's been very fast paced. And like I said um, to you off, off the uh, mic that when Pat was here, she was still helping me and it was such a tremendous help and I'm so thankful that she did it but I think it kind of made me feel like I was a little bit more settled than I actually was because as soon as she left it's like everything started to come but it's been exciting I'm excited about it and we're going to be doing a lot of things and making a lot of great changes and, and upholding a lot of the traditions that are already here but it has been very fast-paced for me and and going uh, quickly so that's exciting uh, so when Trev Alberts is hired in the summer and this position was going to be coming open with, with Pat retiring this was a position that was really important to him that you know, they, they took did due diligence and interviewed people and, and took the process how mm -hmm. they needed to take it to make sure they got the right person in mm -hmm. here. So from your end of things, what was the process like for you going through all of this and interviewing with Trev and kind of seeing if this was the right spot for you as well? Well, it's very interesting because um, I think most people would be like, you're going to leave Florida and go to Nebraska. And I, when I saw the position opened and read the job description, it was really similar to a lot of the things that I was doing at South Florida. So I was the SWA there. I oversaw a lot of the same units and I oversaw men's basketball and women's basketball there. So I thought it was very, very attractive that they had an SWA in the Big Ten overseeing a male revenue sport. Um, and so that it was just a continuation of that. And so then as I got into the process, Process and you know met with the search committee with some of the people that I actually am on executive staff with now it was very nice to meet them and you know hear about their experiences here and things were again in change and he wants to make a lot of the changes and just meeting with him actually solidified it for me it was you know you meet him and I'm like this is somebody I could work for and this is somebody that I would you know love to enact their vision for the department and so um, once he offered it to me it was it was a no-brainer to me pretty much I knew I was coming at that point if I had gotten the offer so I was just excited to do it it came like the week before Christmas break, which was some of the, the reason why it took me so long to actually physically get here, um, because I wanted to, you know, finish the things I was doing, and I was in a basketball season with two sports there, so I wanted to get them to a good place where I could leave, and so that's what, you know, it was just a lot going on, the holidays, first of the year, all of those different things that you go through, and then coming, but it's been, um, I'm glad to be here. What was it about Trev in those conversations that you felt like he would be a leader you would want to work for? He was just honest and upfront, you know, on, you know, just this, he was like, this is how I see things. This is, you know, he's a former player, so he loves this place. It comes out in his conversation. Um, but he was just like, this is what I want you to do. I'm going to give you the autonomy to make some of the changes that I want made. But I also want, I think you'll be good to come in because you've had, you've seen it done one way in another place you bring in and there's not a lot of, uh, people with different expertise here you know they have a lot of loyal Nebraska they've been here you hear that everywhere I've been here for 10 plus years or I, I, I was here for 15 years I left for three and I came back so people love this place but I think that you know having people with a diversity of experiences and, and being at different levels I came from a group of five schools so that comes with some different things when you're moving up to autonomy five he just really was like I'm gonna let you run these departments and, and do some of these things you're gonna be different from Pat don't try to be her mm -hmm. were, were the things that he told me off the off the rips so it's really been good to, you know, just know that he, I have his support um, to do the things that I feel like we need to do here to get better. So you graduated, you got your bachelor's degree and your master's um, in sport administration from Mississippi State. But can you take me back to that decision that you thought, okay, maybe I want to get into sports administration, maybe be an athletics director, be a leader of a department. How did that decision process come about for you? So um, my dad has no daughter. I mean, he has no sons. So it's two daughters. So I'm the oldest of that. So I kind of got the 
you're going to sit here and watch these sports with me. So I've always loved sports ever since I was, you know, a young girl. And I always used to say back in like middle school, I was like, I'm going to be the first female NBA commissioner. Well, I didn't get there, but <laughs> that's what I thought I wanted to Not do. Anyway, <laughs> I think I'm here. I think college <laughs> athletics is my, is my lane. I think I can stay. Um, but, uh, you know, I always knew I wanted to work in sports. I just didn't know where. So then I go to Mississippi State and I thought I was going to do sports law. And, you know, after I get, you get done with your, Bachelor's degree, still not knowing exactly what to do. I took a year off. I worked full time, and then that was not for me. It just wasn't. And so my mom was like, hey, I think you really need to kind of come in with some focus and figure out what you want to do. You always said you wanted to go to sport, sports, and I was still living in Starkville. So she was like, I think you need to, you know, apply to grad school there. They had the program and everything. And so literally that's what kind of gave me the kick to, to do it. And I got there, and um, I had a really good professor there. His name is Dr. David Ridpath, and he's still he's a professor or not Ohio University and in the college athletic circle still as a you know a commentator and, and different things but he did a really good job of exposing us to mostly it was mostly college athletics focus not as much pro but he he exposed us to a lot of the different areas that were in um, athletics and compliance was he was a former compliance director himself so he spoke a lot from that vein and it sounded like something I can do so that's kind of where I started and springboarded from. Wow, that's awesome. So uh, the senior woman administrator, I think a lot of people think it's, and Pat brought this up mm -hmm. when we had interviewed her, that you're overseeing the women's sports right. and that you're the senior women's administrator. Right. You're the senior woman administrator, right. meaning that you are the highest woman on the in the athletics department. Can you tell us a little bit about you know your take on how important that role is and mm -hmm. why you felt like you could be in that role? Um, I think that, you know, like you said, people think it's only women's sports. Like even now, people think it's women's sport. And then when I got this job, you know, like you're looking on social media and some of the comments and people were like, that's such an antiquated title. Why would they ever give her that? And, you know, just without that lack, that understanding. But I, I really think it's an honor and a privilege to be in this spot. And I know it comes from legislation. Like we have to have someone designated as that. But I think it's very important for women to be at the table. I mean, we, me, and also me as a woman overseeing a male sport. Board, I think that means something. Um, we can do these jobs. A lot of times we're doing the work anyway, and people just don't know or they just don't realize how much goes into it. But it's really something that I, you know, is very special to me. Um, and I think it is important. It's unfortunate in some regards that we still, you can look around and you still have to have that in departments, but I think having it versus not having it, I'd rather us have it. Um, and so I think it's very important, but I think it also gives the young ladies and the young men in these departments something to look up to and know, one on the young, for the young women that you can do this work. You don't have to only coach, even though that's a great profession for them. There's other things to do if you want to work in athletics and, and have an impact. And also for the young men to see that they're, that they're strong women throughout the department that are out actually making decisions in charge of doing some of these things and that they can see that that's something that you know it's not bad to report to a woman it's good to have strong women in your life so I think it does a, it does a lot for a lot of the people that are in this department or associated with us we've seen a lot of growth with women's sports um, over the last several years but you know every woman that you talk to especially that have been around and, and been a part of it for a long time we're not there yet we mm -hmm. still have work to go so what is your take on the growth and where we need to keep going, um, especially maybe here within the Big Ten and here at Nebraska. I think this department, honestly, just on my from being here in these the the last three months, um, is very well situated when it comes to um, some of the efforts that they're trying to do on women's sports. There's more that we can do, and we have been from pretty much the day I got here. We've been talking about what are those what are those next steps. We do really well in a lot of our sports and facilities and in scholarshiping and different things. But what are the next things that we need to do? So we've outline some of that and we're going to I think uh, women's sports really it's just a lack of um, promotion honestly mm -hmm. in some of the sports like if you look at the final four um, from last year and this year and the changes that were made but also just the promotion of the women's tournament this year and the viewership was up everything was up because people you turn on ESPN and it was there and you know I don't have to search for it anymore you can just see it. and I think the more that we do that throughout this industry it's gonna be just spot shine that light on these young ladies and these coaches who do all of the same things that we're doing on the male side they put on all the same hours and they're working just as hard and to see them be rewarded for that work on a public platform um, and publicly throughout you know all these departments I think the Big Ten also is a leader in that regard there's a lot of initiatives that are going to come out um, with this being the 50th anniversary of Title IX this year some celebrations that we're going to do that the conference is going to do I really think that Nebraska and the Big Ten Conference are leaders when it comes to the promotion of women's sports 
I agree, and I, that's been important to me since I started is to make sure that we, we provide a platform, an equal platform for, for the women's athletes, and we've seen that growth that, I mean, look what the national championship did for women's basketball. Mm -hmm. It was the highest rated basketball game, mm -hmm. men's or women's, since mm -hmm. 2008 on ESPN. And then mm -hmm. you look at what our volleyball team did this year. They broke multiple records Absolutely. for a viewership. Mm -hmm. So I guess getting saying all that to say that with women's basketball in particular, it's still a lot of times on the streaming platforms, mm -hmm. right? Right on the plus mm -hmm. where it's still behind a paywall is there something that maybe you could do we can do to continue to push maybe getting them on the mainstream plat the streaming platform i think this year if you looked like they put all of the tournament games on uh, espn uh, one mm -hmm. or on two on regular k or what we consider you know regular tv now cable um I think that that was important to do, and I kind of feel like they might have done it as like a test, like yeah. let's see how this goes. And it, it blew it out of the water. I mean, it was on right with the men at the same time, and they still were able to carry their biggest numbers ever. So I think that that is a testament to people want to see it. You mm -hmm. put it out there, and people will see it. So I think that that might be something in the future as we look to, you know, a lot of things are going to these pay pay walls the apps hulu everything i have every app i think that we can think of and cable <laughs> right. and every but you know i think that that's where it's you know our technology is going but when it comes to highlighting these championships and these big time games i think if they put them on these mainstream um these mainstream tv channels that that you will see the people will come and they will watch absolutely so i wanted to talk to you about being in charge of the men's basketball program and how uh, awesome of an opportunity that was for you like mm -hmm. you said to be a woman overseeing a male revenue mm -hmm. sport it's it's amazing um i had you know i worked like i said in south florida i've had that basketball i had that basketball program for about two and a half years um and a lot of it's just relationships i had a relationship with that coach we had worked in a former institution when i was in the compliance role and then i was overseeing a sport um and so, you know, it's just one of those things where coaches are pretty much the same. They want to know that you support them. They want to know that they um, that th we're trying to do everything we can to make their programs better alongside with them. And that's how I that's my philosophy when I go as, as far as a sport administrator and overseeing a sport. It doesn't change because of the gender and that the students want to know that you're there. So I travel with my sports. I, I try to make sure I'm at all of their championships, postseason opportunities, but I also travel throughout the year so that they can see me. And know that I'm there and just an extension, you know, not not meddling, but if they ever need anything that I'm there. And so I think that it's it's great. And I love basketball. Basketball is the first thing that was my first sports love. Um, I love it. And I'm just glad. And again, just really honored to be able to do it because it's not even though you would think it's the norm. It's really not the norm for uh, for a woman to be in this this position. And so just want to make the best and help our program, you know, get us turned around and, and, and back to winning. Absolutely. I think maybe some people might be listening in and um, I don't know if I've actually ever done a good job about explaining. Can you maybe dive into what the role and duty is of a sport admin? Mm -hmm. And I'm sure it's different for different sports, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's different for different sports, but mainly you're the person responsible. You're basically the athletic director of your specific sport. You're the the um, oversight for the head coach you know even though we have you know a, a name a name recognized head coach I'm still his immediate supervisor um, when it comes down and then you really are working with him and that staff and also the students so you're kind of just navigating with them they have their own staffs they have all of these people that surround them but you're really there as their liaison back to um, back to Trev and also making sure that they have everything as far as a program is concerned. If there's any issues within the programs, you're usually the first person um, on the administrative side. You should be the first person to know, um, and you help navigate through there. If there's parent issues, a lot of times you get involved sometimes with those types of things. Um, so it just runs the gamut. It looks different everywhere. Sport administrators are different everywhere and what their responsibilities are. There's no job description for that. It's the other duties as assigned kind of thing. So you just, for me, again, I try to start in with the relationship, getting to know the staff, getting to know the student athletes, and figuring out what those needs are at the institution that I'm at. You had mentioned wanting to help get the program turned around, and even Travis talked about how um, excited he's been about the plans that mm -hmm. Coach Hoiberg has in place. What's been your impression and perspective on that coming in as a new face, a new perspective on things, on, on what Fred's plans are to, to maybe turn this thing around? I think, too, what people need to realize, this conference is you know top tier when it comes to competition. It is hard from the top to the bottom. It doesn't matter what your record is. You can get beat on any night. So I think that there's some understanding 
that needs to come with that. But people want to win, so we, that's what we're here. If we're going to keep score, we might as well win. Um, <laughs> so I think that it's been, but it's been really good. Fred has been very receptive um, to me coming here and me being a part of that program, and he does have some distinct plans, and he's already enacted some of those things. We have, you know, our new coach that came, uh, Chris Howard from. Um, from South, South Alabama. So he's doing some of those things and, and really just getting back. I think COVID really did do some things to, to a lot of teams um, as far as camaraderie, being able to be together and gelling and not making that an excuse, but that's a, that was a real thing. And so I think now that we are going to be two years out of that and we have pretty much the same staff and we have a core of our, our team coming back and we're going to build on that with an awesome recruiting class, I think that we're going we're gonna to see some better basketball out there and fans are going to be proud of that and that's what we want. Can't wait. Okay, let's talk about your other sport that uh, you're overseeing is volleyball. <laughs> Absolutely. And Coach Cook told a hilarious story the other day about when he first met you. He had his saddle in the sh in the shower. He did. That he was breaking in. What, what was your he perspective did. on that? I, I didn't even realize it. it was just a huge box. And so then he was like, Marquita, forgive the smell in my office. It's a nasty saddle. And I was like, okay. <laughs> you know, no, that, put that down as never having had that happen before. Um, <laughs> but, you know, Coach Cook and everybody knows him, and everybody knows how excellent he. And again, I, we've he he's been busy and doing some things, but we did get our opportunity to sit down. And I had only asked, I was like, "Hey, I'll do 30 minutes with you," and he sat with me for an hour and a half. And wow. so again, you you kind of get those things, and you when you have that kind of stuff happen, and he's a busy guy, and he's he's trying, you know, he's he's trying to win a national championship. That's what he wants to do. And I just appreciate him taking that time and you know being open to forging again another relationship he was with Pat forever and that she was his sport administrator they had that relationship they had that open communication line and so I want to do that same thing for him and basically it's whatever he needs and I know he has a way to do it and it's worked I'm not going to interfere with that but I'm here again as that that resource if there's anything that he needs so you didn't ask any questions about the saddle no he, he kind of told me he was like hey somebody <laughs> sent that to me and I know he had horses so I just kind of left it you know <laughs> hey like I it never has it never happened before to me so I will yeah again not not never forget it oh that's awesome how excited are you though as in your career to work with a program like volleyball Nebraska volleyball and how renowned they are and coach cook one of the best if not the best right. in all of college volleyball I mean it's a, again it is amazing um I was watching them when I was still you know I had, was in the mix for the job and so you kind of start paying attention it's like the volleyball program was popping up everywhere but just to watch them watch them in Columbus and how they competed and just to the end I mean I there's not much that's a that's a championship winning team and you know a lot of our teams in this building want to be like them and they should want to but I'm just glad to be uh, associated with a program like that there's nothing I can really uh, do that's going to be that impactful I don't think at this point but I'm just really glad that they are just they're they're excellent students it's an excellent staff they they get along in this building you know and they try to help others in the building and so I'm just really glad and, and again grateful to be a part of, of their program. So when you come into a new role like this, um, wh what's your approach? I mean, I'm sure it's got to be okay, I've got all these things I want to do, but how do you take on one thing at a time and manage all the different things you have to do? I'm very sensitive um, when you come into any place. Um, that people have a way of doing things and they're proud of the way that they've done things and you know, they don't know what they don't know or they don't know like if they're doing something that hey there's maybe a better way so I kind of sit back especially when you come in at the middle of the academic year I'm not for you know like just let's let's start from scratch that that's not the time to do that so basically for me right now it's assessment periods with everything and what what are we doing great let's keep those things are there some things we can improve upon um, and we'll we'll take some inventory after the school year summer will be a very busy time to implement some things uh, that we want to do or make some changes um, and then we'll we'll figure those things out but I'm not for one that's like hey unless it's something that's just detrimental that we have to stop let's just see what they're doing and why get the why again build those re you got to build the relationships you can't I keep saying that because I'm new and they uh, a new and an unknown and they're you know people are sensitive and so you have to you have to be respectful of that and that's what I'm aiming to do and then if we need to make some changes or do some things we'll do those things but I think there's nothing wrong with waiting and just trying to get the the lay of the land and that's what I'm trying to do right now if you have a young girl in college, high school, even maybe in this ad, uh, athletics department now or across the country that are listening that maybe want to be in your role one day, what would be your biggest words of advice? 
I think the one thing they need to know is they can do it. I mean, I have, I, I do this job and it's demanding, but I have a family. Um, I'm a mother and all, and I'm very proud of those things and I make sure that um, that has its place, but that you can do these jobs. Like, I think that's the thing it might seem like. And again, I didn't have like a, I, I didn't have a, oh, in five years I'm gonna do this and then I'm gonna do this. I just worked hard and I did the best job in the job that I have. And I, that's what, one of the things, do the job or the responsibility that you have and you have to do it well. You can't just do it, but you have to be done well. And if you do that, the other things will come. And I tell that to young people all the time. It's it's not an instantaneous, it's not just five years from now I'm gonna do this. I want, you know, you just gotta concentrate and work hard and do those things. And that's what I've tried to do. Um, and it's worked out well for me. And I've been very, very blessed also. We had Courtney Wallace in a picture for Nebraska softball in, and she had talked about, you know, some former Nebraska softball players that have gone on to be head coaches that are black women, that mm -hmm. how important that mm -hmm. is. So what about for you and your role? How important is it to have a black woman in a leadership role like this? I mean, it's, 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 um, I don't think you can put a value on it, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, you have your student athletes and, and you're here. And honestly, one of the reasons that I came here is because I know that the diversity wasn't as high and that that's one of the tribe's goals is to make sure, not just in race and, and gender, but just diversity of, like I said, diversity of thought, diversity of uh, experiences and opinions, all of those things make any type of organization, but especially an athletic department better. So as a African-American woman, I, I don't take for granted being here. Again, not a lot of women, but there's definitely not a lot of minority women in these roles. And so I know that I'm like paving ways for other people, but also people are looking to me as an example of what it is to be um, a, a woman of color in these types of positions. And I, and I take that seriously. And I know that my actions, my words, and the things that I do, that somebody's always watching me and they're looking to me as an example. So I try to be cognizant of that in the way that I do things in the way that I interact with others and so it's very you know again an honor and a privilege is what I say I don't have to be doing this somebody else could be here doing these things but I try to always be cognizant of that well you're new to Lincoln and I know your family is still in the process of getting here mm -hmm. so tell us a little bit about your family that Husker fans can look forward to seeing you uh, here absolutely I am um, it's I have my husband Demetric and um, he has moved with me everywhere so I tell <laughs> the story he used to be a for his former uh, police officer when we first met that's what he was a police officer and then once we moved like twice and he had to go through two academies he was like I'm not doing this anymore Marquita I'm gonna go back so he went back and he got his PhD in criminal justice so he he's a, he teaches at a, a small in high school in uh, Clearwater, Florida. But he, him, and then there's Braylon, and it's my 12-year-old, 12, going on 20, as I tell people all the time. <laughs> yeah, he kind of runs everything. He's a great kid. Um, they are just, they're excited to be here. And that was one of the things, too. I have to be in this business, you have to be intentional about where you take it because it's not just me. If it was just me, I could go wherever and do whatever, but I have a family to think about and they are super supportive. They're always around. You, um, if you see me one, after June, you will probably see them. Um, and it's just the three of us. And so we're, you know, we're excited to be here. We moved into, I moved into our house. It's pretty empty. Me and my air mattress moved into the house a couple weeks ago. So they'll be coming with the rest of the stuff, but we're just, I'm just excited for them to get here and see it um, and see all the things that we have here. And I think that they're going to fit in really nicely here in Lincoln. Marquita, it's so excited to have you here. I could keep talking to you for another hour, but I know you have a lot of things Thank to you do. So, so we'll, we'll get you on again soon, but I can't wait to see all the great things I know you're going to do here in Lincoln. Absolutely. And thank you guys so much for having me, and go be right. You already got it down. <laughs> Love it. <laughs>